Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to Through the Bible in a Year. It is day 250, um, it's coming up on iPad now, um, uh, day 254, 254 is the day I believe. Uh, you guys know this is a part of us living out our year, so we're together, we're reading through scripture, studying it together, learning it together, growing together. Um, this is the pre-recorded version, uh, for good reason. Because <laughs> got a lot on the plate and I need to get stuff done, but the Bible is important. Point blank, period, no questions about it. The scripture is important. And so um, today we're reading Luke chapter 22, 39 verses 46, uh, 39 through 46, the Messianic Jews, chapter 6, verses 13 through 20, um, Mishlei, and Proverbs chapter 23, verses 1 through 18. And then Yeshua Yahoo chapters 27 and 28. Let's remember what we're asking the Lord, right? Lord, show me me. And then Lord, give me revelation beyond information. Revelation beyond information. I'm sure you guys can hear pretty well. I just turned the music down a little bit. Um, uh, so I'm not distracted, right? If you missed yesterday's, go back and look at yesterday's. Um, if you missed this morning's worship, go back and look at this morning's worship. It was an awesome time of worship. And yesterday's, uh, I shared from the thought moving forward. I, I was supposed to change the name moving forward and grow. Uh, so that's the addendum to the title. But let's read together Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 48 from the Complete Jewish Bible. And it reads, On leaving, Yeshua went, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and the Talmudim followed him. When he arrived, he said to them, Pray that you won't be put to the test. He went about a stone's throw away from them, kneeled down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, let not my will be, let not my will but yours be done. There appeared to him an angel from heaven giving him strength. And in great anguish he prayed more intensely so that his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. On rising from prayer and coming to the Talmudim, he found them sleeping because of their grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you won't be put to the test. Messianic Jews chapter 6, verses uh, 13. I don't have my glasses on today. 13 through 20. For when God made his promise to Abraham, he swore an oath to do what he had promised. And since there was no one greater than himself for him to swear by, he swore by himself and said, I will certainly bless you and I will certainly give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham saw the promise fulfilled. Now people swear oaths by someone greater than themselves and confirmation by an oath puts an end to all dispute. Therefore, when God wanted to demonstrate still more convincingly the unchangeable character of his intentions to those who were to receive what he had promised, he added an oath to the promise so that through two unchangeable things and neither of which God could lie, we who have fled to take a firm hold on the hope set before us would be strongly encouraged. We have this hope. We have this hope as a sure and safe anchor for ourselves. A hope that goes right on through to what is inside the parakeet, where a forerunner has entered on our behalf, namely Yeshua, who has become a Kohen Gadol forever, to be compared with Malachi the Zedek. Mishle, chapter 23, verses 1 through 18. When you sit down to dine with the ruler, think carefully about who is before you. If you have a big appetite, put a knife to your throat. Don't be greedy for his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. I like that. Don't exhaust yourself in pursuit of wealth. Be smart enough to desist. If you make your eyes rush at it, it's no longer there. For wealth, will surely grow wings like an eagle flying off to the sky. Don't eat the food of a stingy man. Don't be greedy for his delicacies. For he is like someone who keeps accounts. Eat, drink, he says to you. 
but he doesn't really mean it. The little you eat, you will vomit up and your compliments will have been wasted. Don't speak in the ears of a fool for he will only despise the common sense in your words. Don't move the ancient boundary stone or encroach on the land of the fatherless. For their redeemer is strong. He will take up their fight against you. Apply your mind to discipline and your ears to words of knowledge. Don't withhold discipline from a child. If you beat him with a stick, he won't die. If you beat him with a stick, you will save him from Sheol. I need to send this to Dyfus on child protective services. My son, if your heart is wise, then my own heart too is glad. My inmost being rejoices when your lips say what is right. Don't envy sinners, but follow the example of those who always fear God. For then you will have a future. What you hope for will not be cut off. Yeshayahu chapter 27. <coughs> Some more here. All right. On that day, Adonai, with his great, strong, relentless sword, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, the twisting serpent, Leviathan. He will slay the sea monster. On that day, a pleasant vineyard. Sing about it. I, Adonai, guard it. Moment to moment, I water it so that no harm will come to it. I guard it night and day. I have no anger in me. If it gives me briars and thorns, then as in war, I will trample it down and burn it up at once, unless it takes hold of my strength in order to make peace with me. Yes, to make peace with me. The time is coming when Yaakov will take root, Israel will bud and flower, and fill the whole world with a harvest. Adonai will not strike Israel as he did others who struck Israel. He will not kill them as he did the others. Your controversy with her is fully resolved by sending her into exile. He removes her with a rough gust of wind on a day when it's blowing from the east. So the iniquity of Yaakov is atoned for by this and removing his sin produces this result. He chops up all the altar stones like chalk, sacred poles, and sun pillars stand no more. For the fortified city is alone, abandoned, and deserted, like the desert calves graze and lie down there, stripping its branches bare. When its harvest dries up, it is broken off. Women come and set it on fire. For this is a people without understanding. Therefore, he who made them will not pity them. He who formed them will show them no mercy. On that day, Adonai will beat out the grain between the Euphrates River and the Vadi of Egypt, and you will be gathered one by one, people of Israel. On that day, a great shafar will sound. Those lost in the land of Asher will come, also those scattered through the land of Egypt, and they will worship Adonai on the holy mountain in Yeru Shalayim. Yeshayahu, chapter 28. Woe to the haughty crown of Ephraim's drunks, to the fading flower of its proud splendor, located at the head of the rich valley, belonging to people overcome by wine. Adonai has someone strong and powerful. He comes like a hailstorm, a destructive tempest, like a flood water rushing, overwhelming. With his hand, he hunts, hurls them to the ground. The haughty crown of Ephraim's drunks is trampled on the foot, and the fading flower of its proud splendor, located at the head of the rich valley, is like the first ripe fig of summer. Whoever sees it, picks and eats it. On the day Adonai Savaot will be glorious, will be a glorious crown, a brilliant diadem for the remnant of his people. He will also be a spirit of justice for whoever sits as a judge and the source of strength for those repelling enemy attacks at the gate. But there are others reeling from wine, staggering about because of strong liquor, Cohen and Prophet Reel from 
strong liquor. They are confused by wine, led astray by strong liquor. They err in their visions and stumble when judging. All tables are covered with vomit and feces. Not a single place is clean. Can no one be taught anything? Can no one understand the message? Must one teach barely weaned toddlers, babies just taken from the breast so that one has to use nursery rhymes? Sav la sav, sav la sav, kav la kav, kav la kav. Zeir sham, zeir sham, precept by precept, precept by precept, line by line, line by line, a little here, a little there. So with stammering lips and a foreign accent, Adam and I will speak to this people. He once told this people, it's time to rest. The exhausted can rest, now you can relax. But they wouldn't listen. So now the word of Adonai for them comes precept by precept, precept by precept, line by line, line by line, a little here, a little there, so that when they walk, they stumble backward and are broken, trapped, and captured. So listen to the word of Adonai, you scoffers, composing taunts for this people in Yerushalayim. Because you said we made a covenant with death. We made a contract with Sheol. When the raging flood passes through, it will not touch us. For we have made lies our refuge and hid ourselves in falsehoods. Therefore, here is what Adonai Elohim says. Look, I am laying in Zion. A tested stone, a, con a costly cornerstone, a firm foundation stone. He who trusts will not rush here and there. I will make justice the plumb line and righteousness the plumb bar. Hail will sweep away the refuge of lies. Water will overflow the hiding place. Your covenant with death will be annulled and your contract with Sheol will not stand. Hallelujah. When the raging flood passes through, you will be trampled down by it. As often as it passes through, it will take you, for it will pass through every morning, day after day, night after night. Understanding the message will be sheer terror. Glory to God. For as the saying goes, the bed is too short for a person to stretch, and the blanket too narrow to, pre to protect him from cold, even if he crams himself in. For Adonai will arise, as at Mount Pratzim, and storm with rage. As in the Givon Valley, so he can do his deed, his strange deed, and perform his task, his alien task. Therefore, now stop your scoff, for your bonds will be further tightened. For I have heard from Adonai Elohim Zavaot that destruction is decreed for the whole land. Listen and hear my voice. Pay attention and hear what I say. Does a farmer sowing keep plowing forever? Does he never stop breaking up and harrowing his land? No. When he finishes leveling it, he scatters his dill seed, sows his cumin, puts wheat in, in rolls, barley where it belongs, and plants buckwheat around the edges. Because his God has taught him this, has given him instruction. Dill must not be threshed with a sledge or cartwheels driven over cumin. Rather, dill one beats with a stick and cumin with a flail. When crushing grain for bread, one doesn't thresh it forever. One drives the horse and cartwheels over it, but doesn't crush it to power. This too comes from Adonai Savoort. His counsel is wonderful. His wisdom is great. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for those who are watching this and those, um, I guess there is no replay, but thank you for those who are going to watch, Lord. I pray that we would hide your word in our heart that we may not sin against you. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would continue to allow our eyes and our ears to be open that we may be able to hear from you and hear from you with clarity, with clarity. Thank you for my opportunity to serve. It is a privilege and an honor to serve your kingdom. 
and your people. Lord God, thank you for revelation beyond information. Thank you. Thank you for showing us those. In your name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. So really quickly, Luke 22, verse 43. I'm going to help somebody really quickly. Verse 43 and 44 says, There appeared to him an angel from heaven, giving him strength. And this is after he... Let me read 42 through 44. Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, let not my will, but yours be done. There appeared to him an angel from heaven, giving him strength. Because he had to do it. Giving him strength. And in great anguish, he prayed more intensely so that his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. I want you guys to keep pushing. I want you guys to keep pushing in the face of adversity, in the face of your adversary. We talked about it yesterday. God was going to allow some things to happen because the adversary has demanded to have you for himself. But Christ prayed for Simon. He said, Simon, Simon, I pray that your trust will not fail. And so when you're coming up against them, even Jesus, y'all, understand that it is okay to feel the way you feel. It's not okay to remain the way you are. And so Jesus, here we are, Jesus, take this cup from me. An angel comes giving him strength, and yet after receiving the strength, he still prays more intensely. Until the strength, sometimes the strength is gone. Sometimes the strength of the Lord, you may not feel it immediately, but you got to know that it's there. When you ask for it, it's there. Hallelujah. He he got strength. And in great anguish, he prayed more intensely after getting the strength. Just because you may not feel God is there in the midst of your situation, I want you to know he's there. He's there. He is there. He was there with Jesus in the garden. The angel came and gave him strength. He hadn't felt it yet. He didn't, he didn't, that strength didn't resonate with him yet. And so he prayed more intensely until that strength kick in. Keep going because your strength is about to kick in. Your strength from God is about to kick in. It's about to manifest. Keep pushing and let your strength kick in. A couple other things. Ah, let me connect these two real quick. Keep going because and, until your strength kicks in. Keep going. And Messianic Jews, Hebrews 6, verse, uh, I think this is 15, says, And so after waiting patiently, Abraham saw the promise fulfilled. That's why you got to keep going. Even when you don't feel it, your strength is about to kick in. Because if you, if you keep waiting, you let that strength kick in and you keep waiting, right? If you keep waiting, you will have the opportunity to see every promise that God has promised you fulfilled. After waiting, and so after waiting patiently, Abraham saw the promise fulfilled. See, it doesn't say, and so after waiting, Abraham saw the promise fulfilled. God, there is an expectation. There is an expectation of us, even on how to wait. God, God has an expectation of, on how we should wait. We just don't wait any old kind of way, but Abraham, Abraham waited patiently and saw the promise fulfilled. Maybe what you're doing, you're doing it the wrong way. Maybe you need to ask the Lord, how should I, how should I wait? How should I proceed? I'm proceeding, but Lord, give me the direction on how to wait. Teach me how to wait. So I can see the promise fulfilled. in my life. I only have one quick thing to say. Uh, Proverbs of Mishle 23, chapter uh, chapter 23, verse 3 says, um, and 2, um, do this. One, one, two, and 3, when you sit down to dine with a ruler, think carefully about who was before you. If you have a big appetite, put a knife to your throat. Don't be greedy for his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. I just got one little quick question. 
It's a real important question. Who are you breaking bread with? Who are you breaking bread with? Blessed is, is not blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of, of the ungodly, nor stands with the sinners, nor sits with the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. While the person you dining with is his delight in the law of the Lord. And does he meditate on it day and night? Who are we eating with, sitting with? Last thing, real quick. Uh, Yeshayahu chapter 28 verse 9 says, Can no one be taught anything? Can no one understand the message? Must one teach barely weaned toddlers, babies just taken from the breast? Listen, let's grow up. This is the last, it's the last thing I got to say. If you can't be taught, you have to be teachable. If you cannot be taught, then there is literally anybody, this is my this is my opinion, anybody who cannot be taught is useless here on earth. If you cannot be taught, instructed, then you are useless here on the earth. If you can't learn nothing from nobody, you are useless here on the earth. Pointless, useless. And we are at a place, we're coming up on three years of 5.30 a.m. worship and prayer. This is our second year doing through the Bible in a year. There should be no babies here, no toddlers in the spirit. No toddlers in the spirit. So be teachable. Let's all make sure we remain teachable. And if you are teachable, remain teachable. But if you're not, become teachable. Amen. Listen, got to go. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. And may you be blessed by the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. And may you be blessed by the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. And may you be blessed by the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. God bless you guys. Love you guys. See you guys tomorrow morning, uh, Thursday. Thursday. Uh, let's remember to pray for those who um, were affected by 9-11. Some... Uh, 18 years ago. I was one of those people. Um, so um, let's make sure we keep those people in prayer. All right. All right. Listen, love you guys. Love you guys tremendously. You guys know how we end our lives. Go say it with me if you remember it. We the people of God. We exist. Why? To be used by God. So God's glory is revealed here on earth as it is in heaven. Bless you. Love you. And I'll see you soon.